the Daily Telegraph bring back stop and search to beat knife crime crisis. The Daily Mail asking how many more 27 teens have been stabbed to death in just a year. Uh, all very, very shocking stuff. And today, police leaders are calling for special stop and search powers to be rolled out across the country in a bid to tackle the crisis. West Midlands police have already ramped up stop and search, with the force saying that their actions have helped remove a number of weapons off the streets. Uh, shockingly, they include two teenagers aged just 14 and 15, both carrying knives. Now, in the past, stop and search was criticised for disproportionately targeting young black men. And that was a big, big problem. Brenda, you have a young black son. Um, what do you feel about stop and search? Is it something that he's experienced? Uh, yeah, uh, my son Jamal, he, I think he was about 13 years old. Um, and I'd sent him to the corner shop just to buy some milk or some sugar or something. Um, and he hadn't come back. Now, I'm... He, you know, the, the corner shop is like a five, ten minute walk. It's not far. So when he hasn't come back, the first thing I'm thinking is what's happened to him. Um, and then when he came back, he was very quiet, didn't really say much. Um, and then about three, four weeks later, I found out that when he'd gone to the shop, he was pulled over by um, uh, three police officers and stopped and searched. They asked him to take out, um, you know, his stuff out of his pockets. Where's he come from? He says, I just live there. I'm just getting something from the corner shop. But they still continued to stop and search him because he apparently fit a profile um, of somebody that they were informed about. Um, so I'm, I'm all for stop and search, but there's got to be a way of monitoring it so that it's fair. How was he affected by it? Well, he, he, he went into his shell for a little while. He didn't say anything. And I, I, the fact that he never said anything to me for like three, four weeks because he was just stewing, I actually think that because that happened to him, there is a danger of it breeding resentment in young people towards police. Which uh, is why it was very much reduced wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but that doesn't seem to be working now. And we have this huge epidemic. You know, 2017 is already stabbed in just uh, a year. Um, the thing is, it's very, very difficult as a white female who's never experienced stop and search, neither of any of my family. When you talk about this, you, you have to choose your words very carefully because obviously people say, well, you don't know what that's like because it's never happened to well, you. Well, back Absolutely in the day, true. Stop, and, stop and search was definitely abused and it was definitely uh, black people, especially in London, felt yeah. that they were picked on unfairly. And, you know, without a doubt, some of them definitely were. And at, at the time when Stop and Search was being used at its height, my partner was black and he was pulled over just because of the car he was driving. Mm. And the same thing happened. He went really, really quiet about it. And this was a very extrovert, you know, noisy person. And it definitely, he felt upset and really humiliated. Yeah. I mean, what was your son wearing when this happened to well, him? Well, he was... The thing was, he was wearing a tracksuit. He was wearing a tracksuit. He had a hoodie. But when that happened, I was so upset for my son that I literally took his hoodies and cut the hoods off of the hoodies because I didn't want him to go through that. It's upsetting. I've raised my... my my children to have respect, to have manners, um, and and be respectful of the police because I know how you know how how easy it is to get caught up in the police and then they start asking you questions. The next minute, what are you asking me a question for? The next minute, you've got your hands behind your back. And it's embarrassing for anybody. It is, it is, Brenda, but then when you're reading this about West Midlands Police saying that because they've been allowed this, this uh, special stop and search, if they believe that there's something you know, going down in a certain area, they've already removed a lot of weapons off the street. Mm. So is that not, you know, for the greater safety of all, if you have a few innocent people People who do get stopped and do get searched and if you're not carrying anything and you're not doing anything wrong you know it could be embarrassing but if it if it serves the greater good mm. and this is what I'm saying it's hard for me to say because yeah. I'm sure you know there are young black people or watching this all like you with your son yeah. saying but it's so unfair when they get stopped and I go well yes it is unfair but if it then the next person they stopped is carrying a knife and they get that person and that knife off the streets is that not going to stop more of that yeah it, and it will but Again, only yesterday, my son said he was stopped yesterday. And he's not doing anything. 
He's, he's got a camera in his hand, he's filming. So why is he being... I, it's a profile thing and it's a stereotypical thing that needs to be stopped. It, if you're going to stop somebody, it's not about whether you're black or white. It's not, it's not a colour thing, it's a young person thing. But, then, is... but then I think the... I think in certain areas in London, the police will say, statistically, it is young black, not everywhere. And in Glasgow, we know that they've done this and it was predominantly white males stabbing white males. But in London, if we're just talking about London where your son lives, well, it is predominantly of of... black, young but, black but males. Hang on a minute. So but that young is black... a profile. Well, young black males are not more guilty of crime than any other group in London because London is a multicultural society mm -hmm. with more ethnic a bigger ethnic mix than any other city in the world and in parts of London you can have people from the Caribbean community living next door to people from the Somali and Turkish uh, Turkish community so I mean I kind of take issue with Brenda here but I think the most important thing to say is that yes you could bring back stock and stop and search in the you know the aggressive way that that it was used in the past but it won't stop knife crime because the reason is that we are still selling knives and knives are available everywhere you go on every high street you can go and buy a knife <laughs> Yeah, can, I just say, can I just say, so I, I've been listening to you all this morning and listening to all this going on all week, and I was thinking, why is it so, why is this happening now? I mean, I know there's been knife crime in the past, but why is it so massive mm. now and every day we're reading this? And, you know, and, and you saying, well, you can still buy knives in shops, blah, blah, blah. You always could buy a knife mm. in a shop and it didn't necessarily result in this. And I was thinking today... Why is it? And then when I go back, I think, for me personally, looking back, I don't know what the answer is now, but it seems to have all started when the whole, the whole um, discipline system went out the window. Yeah. From, from schools not being allowed to say or do anything to pupils. There's no consequences, it seems. And so all these kids now are like feral kids just running around everywhere. They're not scared of the police. Yep. They're not scared of the parents because yep. they can take the parents to court if the parents are disciplining them. The same with the police. And it's kind of like, can we not go... I'm not saying we should go back to using a cane or anything yeah. like that, but we should go back where they know where the line is and there's discipline. But and I think they need. They, I think social. Actions. You know, it, it isn't just police. The police just can't solve this on their own, no, can they? I mean, they it's can't. got. You know, you've got to look at a lot of these young uh, young people are carrying knives because they're frightened and they're worried. You know, that they probably have no intention of using the knife, but they're frightened that somebody might pull a knife on yeah, them. Yeah, well, in Glasgow, they went into the hospitals and they started counselling when uh, young men or people, victims, came in with knife wounds. Uh, the police and social workers and a support system moved into place to try and build up trust with them to try and take them out of the gang system. And that's a long-term solution that needs to happen yeah. in London and Birmingham yeah. and it's, other it's, cities. Yeah, I think it's a lot of things that need so to be in things. place. But yeah. right now, the police are saying if we have those stop-and-search powers, we could at least maybe get some of those weapons off the streets. Uh, it's a very difficult one. Please let us know what you think. Uh, we love to hear from you.